Hi, I'm Eric Miller with the Biofeedback Network, and we have an interesting topic for discussion today, knitting and physiology. My sister, Andrea Price, is a knitting book author and knitted her way through Harvard Grad School. Hi there, I'm Andrea Price, and I'm the author of a knitting reference book called Knitsby. And I've been struck, as many people are, by the common wisdom that says that knitting is a soothing activity. But when I've looked up uh, different kinds of sources on the web, everybody seems to agree. Lots of people tell me, oh, knitting is such a soothing activity. But I haven't been able to find any research that really supports this directly. Well, it so happens that my brother is a biofeedback practitioner and researcher, and he helps people concentrate and alleviate their stress through learning how to control their sort of responses through biofeedback. So I enlisted him in helping me to run a simple experiment here in his living room. Won't you join us? Okay. So we're going to utilize some biofeedback software. However, instead of giving the subject, my sister, feedback as to what her physiology is doing, we're going to turn the feedback off and just use the software as a monitoring device to see what's happening with her heart rate and her galvanic skin response. And this is going to take a reading of heart rate and skin conductivity. And now we're going to fire up the software, which you're going to see on the screen as we start to get some initial levels. The mind drive unit is now adjusting to the subject. When a person is stressed, we see this number rise. As a person relaxes and calms, this number decreases. Here we have a standard measure of heart rate. And here is our pet Coca, the dog. There's a good cut. Okay, go sit, Coco. Now our subject is not going to be looking at the screen, so she's not going to be getting feedback as to what her physiology is doing. But you, the viewer, are going to be able to see exactly what's happening, and we're going to have some uh, data in the form of bars every 30 seconds, which show uh, what the response is. However, our software is picking up data at a rate of 24 data points per second and then averaging this, uh, these numbers every one second. So we'll be able to go back into the data in post and see our readings for every second that we're conducting the, the experiment. And we'll be able to see the 30 second averages on screen. So now our subject Andrea, our knitting author, is sitting calmly and quietly, um, attempting to do nothing. And I will quiet down so she can uh, adjust to the environment and we'll see what her physiology does during this baseline period. Okay, so distractions like this may have an effect on physiology. So we're going to remove Coco the dog, like this, and there's a good pup. And we're going to take you somewhere else. Mm, that's okay. Okay, now that we have four 30-second blocks of baseline physiological data, I'll now ask the subject to start knitting, and we'll see what happens with physiology.
Now you'll notice, the viewer, that we're already starting to see a very steep calming response here. You can see this relaxation curve starting with the second minute, or the second 30 second block of the knitting condition. Okay, now let's take a look at the results. Here's a graph showing the trend of our physiological measures, electrodermal activity and heart rate, over the course of our experiment. We see here in the uh, first graph a slight increase in electrodermal activity, that is the stress response or nervous system activation during the baseline period, and quite a steep reduction in electrodermal response during the knitting condition. On the graph, there's quite a spike right at the transition period here from baseline to knitting. This may have to do with the actual physical transition of picking up the knitting apparatus and moving into the knitting condition. We also notice that there's a very sharp decline in electrodermal activity after the first minute, uh, which we'll call the transition minute. Okay, now let's take a look at the averages. We can see here, for electrodermal activity, this indicator of stress shows a decrease from 68.49 during the baseline, doing nothing condition, to 63.90 during the knitting condition. Heart rate. Initial baseline average, 91.45, and then reduced during the knitting condition to 85. 64. That is, it reduced almost 6 beats per minute during the knitting condition. This graph shows minimum and maximum points, so we can see what the variability looked like. There was a fair amount of variability for the electrodermal response, and this again may have to do with the transition from doing nothing to knitting, that is picking up the knitting apparatus and beginning the physical uh, activity of knitting. Um, heart rate, however, remained remarkably constant. And now, because inquiring minds want to know, we were curious as to whether these results are statistically significant. If we take a look at our independent samples t-test results, we can see with p equals 0 0.000 that both of our decreases for electrodermal and for heart rate are highly significant. We became a little more rigorous and conducted a paired samples t-test. In this test, we compared the first four 30-second blocks of baseline directly with the first four 30-second blocks of knitting. And then we compared that same baseline with the last four 30-second blocks of knitting. For electrodermal response, in the paired samples t-test, we found there was no statistically significant difference between the baseline and the first four 30-second blocks of knitting, p equals 0.213. However, there was a statistically significant difference between the baseline and the last four 30-second blocks of knitting. We find that here, there is a statistically significant difference between the two conditions for both electrodermal and for heart rate of note is that we did not find any significant change for the 10 second period where there may have been an artifact from Coco the dog coming up to our subject.